Hello dear children, Namaste and welcome to the next video of our Bio Bites in 15 minute series for ICSE class 10 children. So yes, today we are going to be discussing the topic your information, the mechanism of your information in just a few minutes. I know this is a very, very uh, important and uh, yet a confusing topic for some of you, which is why I chose to um, do a bio bites video on this particular topic. Okay, so here we get started. And just in case there's anyone here who's attending my session for the very first time, my name is Ambika and I'm your biology master teacher right here on the super amazing platform of Vedantu. Okay, guys, so here is my positive quote for you for today. Life is a one-time offer. Use it well. Okay. Always remember this. And um, of course, we've got amazing courses available for you at Vedantu. So to check out the details of it, please visit the link in the description box below and the pinned comment also in the comment section below. Apply the coupon code AMBPRO to avail them at the best prices. Okay, guys. Right. So your information is what we need to understand today. Of course, children, let me remind you that this is a bio bites video and not the entire in depth in detail video. If you're looking for um, if you're looking at understanding it in depth, please check out the main playlist. We've discussed everything. We've covered everything well in detail over there. OK, right. So structure of a neuron, uh, structure of a nephron, sorry, is something that you must know to be able to answer questions uh, related to the uh, mechanism of your information because without the without understanding of this particular structure it's going to become super confusing memorizing is not going to work for you of course we know the kidneys help in excretion of nitrogenous waste um, and each kidney contains approximately 1 million nephrons which act as a functional unit of the kidneys remember the major parts of the nephron which are the bowman's capsule with the glomerulus inside it which is this tuft of blood capillaries the bowman's capsule is followed by the proximal convoluted tubule which we also call the pct okay and then this is followed by the loop of henley which we also uh, abbreviate this way and then this is followed by the distal convoluted tubule or the DCT. This is followed by the collecting duct or the collecting tubule. Okay. Now around the entire nephron, remember, there are also peritubular capillaries which run around in parallel. And exchange of a lot of matter happens between that blood and the tubular parts of the nephron. Okay. This is something you need to keep in mind. And also remember children, you must have a very clear picture about which part of the nephron falls in the cortex, which part in the medulla. This is quite often asked in ICAC board exams. Okay. All right. So now coming to the very first step of your information, which is glomerular filtration. So what happens is water and solutes, um, to start off, remember, have it in your mind that it is the blood in your body which is brought into the um, kidneys with the help of the renal arteries. Okay, renal arteries are pumping this blood and bringing them to the kidneys and it enters into each nephron through the afferent arteriole. So this is the afferent arteriole, the afferent arteriole. Okay. Right, afferent arteriole through which blood enters into the glomerulus. So there a lot of filtration happens, just like straining of something, the smaller particles, particles like um, as in water and a lot of tiny solutes and a lot of other um, anything, anything and everything which is really smaller than blood proteins. Most of them would be able to pass through these tiny pores and get filtered in the form of what we call glomerular filtrate okay and the rest of it uh, what whatever component of the blood like the red blood cells and a lot of other proteins the bigger proteins of the blood which don't get filtered leave this area through the efferent arteriole okay right so this is what happens so yes um, that is step number one for you glomerular filtration and then comes tubular reabsorption. So what happens here is, uh, you know, the glomerular filtrate is now entering, is now entering into the tubular parts of the nephron. The first part of it is the proximal convoluted tubule. So in tubular reabsorption, what happens is certain substances like sodium, amino acids, glucose and all of them, which are, which have by chance entered into glomerular filtrate by filtration in step one, 
have to be reabsorbed into the blood, into your body because they are still useful to your body. This is what happens in tubular reabsorption. They get transported out of the filtrate into the tubul tubular cells and they enter into the capillary blood, which is around the tubular parts of the nephron. Okay, so this is how it occurs. Sodium amino acids and glucose mainly are getting reabsorbed. So this image here, children, gives you a good... Um, idea i mean if you have a look at it once you understand this concept completely it will really help you understand how it works at one glance okay so yes malpigian body remember it is the uh, glomerulus and the bowman's capsule together which we call the malpigian body okay so this is it and then comes the last step which is tubular secretion wherein your blood is doing one final round of cleaning up something like um hydrogen ions, potassium ions, excess, which are in excess, um, creatinine uh, and any kinds of drugs, all of these which are not required by your bodies from the peritubular capillaries, they get secreted by the tubular cells back into the filtrate and now it becomes part of what we call urine. Okay, so here it gets tubular secretion occurs and it comes into the collecting tubule in the form of urine okay and in the collecting tubule if at all there is any excess water that gets detected in the urine that gets reabsorbed depending upon water availability in your body so adh has the ability to take care of all those levels if at all there is a shortage of water in your body a lot of uh, water as much as is required gets reabsorbed here reabsorbed here by the collecting tubule okay so yes the entire mechanism of urine formation at uh, one glance for you. Um, children, remember, if you remember right, um, I have given you the analogy of cleaning up uh, ha that happens in your house. For example, glomerular filtration, compare it to the cleaning up activity that you in your room. You're like, you throw out anything and everything that you don't need. You may throw out uh, things which are very good also. Some uh, things which are like bags, books and all of them, which you think are useless, but they are actually still in good quality um, so that it can still benefit the entire household. But for you, it's like you don't care about it. That's what glomerular filtration is, throwing out anything and everything that you don't really need. Okay, Tubular reabsorption is the step where your mummy comes and examines all that uh, waste that you have just thrown out into the uh, dump and she comes and checks and she's like, okay, she's actually reabsorbing things which she finds useful and she's like wondering, okay, why is this boy throwing out all these things? We actually need it in the house and she is like taking back all of those and keeping them again, okay, retaining them in the house. And tubular secretion is the step where your mom is like, okay, now I will clean up my room and the rest of the house also. If there's anything more I need to add to this dump, I will add, add them here. So she's like cleaning up other parts of the house and adding them to the waste that you have put in that garbage bin. Okay, that is tubular secretion. And water conservation at the end, which happens in the collecting tubule, which is an additional step there, ultimately forming what we call urine. So this is it, the entire session in a bite size for you. Each kidney contains approximately 1 million nephrons that act as a functional unit of the kidney. Water and solutes, uh, which are smaller than proteins and red blood cells, are forced through the capillary walls and pores of the glomerular capsule into the renal tubule. This step is called glomerular filtration. Okay, And then uh, this results in the formation of what we call glomerular filtrate okay and the remaining two steps um, are happening in the glomerular filtrate movement of substances from the tubular fluid back into the blood is tubular reabsorption and finally movement of substances from the blood into the tubular fluid is called tubular secretion children remember it with the story example which i have told you i'm sure you will be able to remember it a lot more easier than you have ever been able to okay children so if you have found this useful please click the like button right now and please do not miss sharing this with all your uh, class 10 icse friends even your cbse friends also because they will also benefit from this um, and stay subscribed to our channel vedantu 9th and 10th english because we will be coming up with not just this series a lot 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 more in the days and weeks to come so that 
your exams are going to be a lot easier than you ever thought. Right, children? And please do put your feedback in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you all. Okay, guys. So until we meet again, take care, stay happy and stay safe. Bye-bye.